In this lecture we will introduce you to the profession of architectural design. Once you have completed this lecture, you will have learned the following. What is architectural design? Sketching versus drawing. The types of drawings found in the residential construction industry, the components of a typical architectural drawing set, and common symbols found in residential design. There is no prerequisite for this lecture. For this lecture, you will be required to complete an assignment. Architecture is both the process and product of planning, designing and construction. Architecture can mean several things. Buildings and other physical structures. The style of buildings and other physical structures. The method of constructing buildings and other physical structures. The practice of the architect. Architecture is the practice of the architect, refers to planning, designing and constructing form, space and ambience. It extends from urban design and master planning to building design, the design of individual spaces and even fixtures and fittings. It also includes the pragmatic aspects of realizing buildings and structures, including programming, procurement and contract administration. The term architecture is also commonly used to describe the process of designing any kind of system and is commonly used in describing information technology. The term architect has been used for many centuries, but the architect as a recognized profession is a relatively modern concept dating back to the mid 16th century. The term and what it represents has evolved throughout history to its current form in which architects are seen as highly qualified and educated professionals. Although buildings, especially residential ones, are commonly designed by people who are not architects, the term architect itself is protected in many jurisdictions. Only qualified individuals that are registered with their respective governing bodies can offer their services as architects and companies must obtain permission to use the title architect in their name. It is a non-criminal offense in several countries for anyone to offer services as an architect if they are not on the register. The role of an architect or architectural designer. Detailed descriptions of the tasks performed by an architectural designer can vary significantly between projects or even office to office. But for the most part, they should include some of the following tasks or a variant thereof. 1. Assisting the client to prepare a strategic or design brief. 2. Carrying out feasibility studies and options appraisals. 3. Advising on the need to appoint other professionals to the consultant team, independent client advisors, specialist designers and specialist contractors. 4. Advising on the procurement route. 5. Preparing the concept design. 6. Preparing the detailed design and construction drawings. 7. Building code reviews. 8. Preparing planning applications. 9. Preparing applications for statutory approvals. 10. Preparing production information. 11. Prepare tender documentation. 12. Contributing to the assessment of tenders. 13. Liaise with building departments. 14. Reviewing designs prepared by others. 15. Acting as contract administrator. 16. Inspecting the works. 17. Advising on the rectification of defects. Design. Architecture is a team working process and rarely a lone activity. There is always a client and there is always an interpreter of that client's needs. The relationship between client and architect slash designer is fundamental and the establishment of a professional and trusting relationship between the two is the bedrock of every successful project. Creating architecture involves art and beauty, science and engineering, values and beliefs, friendship and teamwork. It is one of life's most rewarding activities, bringing together a wide range of personalities, skills and expertise. It is an adventure for the client, the architect and their team. It is important to place that adventure within a sound organizational and contractual context so that procedural complications do not derail the principal activity. A simple, clear, legally defined understanding of what is involved, will benefit the whole process, avoid conflict, 
and help clarify the interrelationships and responsibilities of all the partners involved in commissioning, designing and building a project, large or small. Architectural services can be procured by a multitude of routes, however, they generally involve certain core activities. 1. Receiving and understanding the brief, agreeing how to proceed and gathering data. 2. Feasibility and assessment. 3. Concept design, outline design. 4. Design development. 5. Construction data. 6. Construction procurement. 7. Inspection. 8. Post occupancy evaluation. Design stages. Building projects are generally divided into a series of stages. This helps to find payment milestones, information deliverables, decision points, the need for new appointments and so on. A project is commonly divided into the following stages. 1. Strategic definition. 2. Preparation and brief. 3. Concept design. 4. Develop design. 5. Technical design. 6. Construction. 7. Handover and closeout. 8. In use. Some stages are more creative than others. The concept design stage is generally considered to be the first and most creative design stage, however this can be a relatively small part of the overall project. It is preceded by a host of non-design activities, such as business planning, customer service, negotiation and municipal building regulatory navigation. All these seems quite complex, especially for residential design. Is it all required? You be the judge. To design a building, you need to be able to perform two tasks, that appear to be similar yet are very different. The first is sketching and the other is drawing. Although sketching within an architectural discipline, does have some constraint, it should employ the following basic concepts. The same can be said about drawing plans for a house, versus drawing a portrait of a person, although both employ the following basic principles. Sketching versus drawing. Sketching is about being free, free to interpret what is in front of you or in your mind, whether it is a person that you are sketching, a landscape, a still life or a more abstract vision. Sketching is about making marks that are lively and interesting, quick deft marks, bold marks that are expressive of you and no one else. Sketching is about letting yourself go and not worrying what the outcome is going to be. Letting your pencil do the work for you. To sketch you need to be relaxed, and to get rid of all preconceived inhibitions of what you think a drawing should be like, and to create something that can be totally different to the subject matter. Foremost, sketching is about committing ideas in your head to paper. Drawing is totally different to sketching, drawing is more architectural, more akin to technical drawing, where you want everything to be more precise and neater. This doesn't mean that drawing is in some way better than sketching. Artists like to draw a good likeness of a person or an accurate representation of a landscape etc., because it feels good to make accurate pictorial representations of something real. But a drawing can sometimes look a bit wooden and stiff, because an artist is trying to be very accurate. When it comes to drawings for construction purposes, accuracy is of the utmost importance, due to the sheer number of people that will be reading and interpreting the drawings. This lecture will concentrate on the introduction of drawings, while subsequent lectures, will introduce you to basic sketching techniques through a series of visualization exercises. Introduction to Architectural Drawings A building or construction project requires a complete set of specialized drawings. These drawings, commonly referred to as construction drawings, are used by the local planning and building departments, as well as by builders, contractors, joiners, plumbers, electricians among others. Buildings are designed by a designer to help plan and produce the drawings. There are two main players in the architectural design arena. The first is an architect. The second is an architectural designer. Architects can and do provide services in the residential sector, but can also provide services for any building type, such as commercial, institutional and industrial. Architectural designers on the other hand, tend to limit their services to residential or light commercial clients. This is mostly due to qualifications, as well as legislation. Building complexity also plays a part in limiting the type of buildings an architectural designer can design. 
Drawings for new buildings require approval from the building department and the planning department before construction work can begin. The building department checks that the design and construction meet building code standards. The planning department assesses whether or not the style and proportions of the proposed building are appropriate for the location and against zoning and planning regulations. Types of drawings Throughout your career you will come across a variety of drawing types and styles. These include Architectural drawings Engineering drawings, which include structural, electrical and mechanical disciplines. As built drawings Technical drawings Shop drawings in the residential design sector, architectural and engineering drawings are usually combined or prepared by the same designer or office. Meaning a structural, mechanical and electrical engineer is not always retained or part of the consulting team, unless it is required by code or is warranted due to the complexity of all or certain components of the house. As a residential designer, you will normally be required to draw within both architectural and engineering disciplines. Technical and shop drawings are usually prepared by suppliers and manufacturers and are not prepared by the designer. They are however, reviewed and approved by the designer. Architectural drawings Architectural drawing is simply the technical drawing of a house, a building or any kind of structure. These drawings are a graphic representation, such as lines, symbols and text, that follow specific conventions of scale and projection. They are used in architecture, construction, engineering, or mapping. In other words, they are a set of sketches, diagrams, and plans used to design, construct, and document buildings. They are always drawn to scale and are a true, albeit smaller representation of the building. They are quantitative in nature with some qualitative aspects. Engineering drawing. Within the commercial construction sector, Engineering drawings are more specialized drawings, usually prepared by an engineering firm rather than an architectural firm. In residential construction this is normally not the case. The designer or design team usually assumes all disciplines, as the structural and mechanical components of a house are less complex and covered by most building codes. They tend to convey information that is more technical in nature rather than quantities, or form, like architectural drawings. Engineering drawings tend to use symbols and text to convey information, rather than an actual pictorial representation of a component. For example, a light fixture on an electrical plan would not show the actual style and shape of the fixture, but rather a symbol representing a light fixture would be added on the plan. The actual fixture model or manufacturer would be captured by either a legend, the specifications are not specified at all, with the fixture being selected by the owner at a later date. Engineering drawings are rooted in civil engineering where precision and technical content was paramount. As opposed to architectural drawings which are more graphical and rooted in the arts. As built drawing. Architectural drawings that reflect changes made during the construction process, recording differences between the original design and the completed structure are called as built drawings. As built drawings are based on the design drawings used during construction, and modified to reflect changes made during construction. Another form of this built drawing is a measured drawing. These drawings are prepared from site measurements of an existing building, where original construction drawings of the building are not available. These are commonly produced in residential design, when designing an addition to an existing home. Technical drawing. Technical drawings are drawings representing specific products, and are usually prepared by the manufacturer of the product. They are highly technical as they convey all necessary information about the product and its installation. They are sometimes referred to as product specs or product brochure. Unlike shop drawings, they are not job specific, meaning they only convey information about the product and its core features. Common components or literature that come with technical drawings include large mechanical equipment, claddings, and installation manuals. Shop drawings. A shop drawing is a drawing or set of drawings produced by the contractor, supplier, manufacturer, subcontractor, or fabricator. Shop drawings are typically required for prefabricated components. 
They are site-specific. Examples of these include elevators, structural steel, trusses, engineered wood products, precast concrete products, windows, appliances, cabinets, air handling units, and millwork. Shop drawings are not produced by architects, engineers or designer under their contract with the owner. They are however reviewed and approved by them, depending on the product and industry. The shop drawing is the manufacturer's or the contractor's drawn version of information shown in the construction documents. The shop drawing normally shows more detail than the construction documents. It is drawn to explain the fabrication of the items to the manufacturer's production crew. The style of the shop drawing is usually very different from that of the architect's drawing. For the remainder of the lecture, we will look at the common components, elements and symbols used in architectural slash construction drawings. One of the first components you encounter on a set of architectural drawings are legends. A legend, simply put, is a chart with all of the symbols used in a particular drawing. It could be an architectural, mechanical, electrical symbol legend, or other types of diagrams. Legends are an invaluable tool, because it simply is not possible to remember every single symbol used in a set of architectural drawings. Although as an architectural designer, you will become very familiar with the various symbols used in the industry, not everyone reading drawings will be as well versed as you. The legend serves as an owner's manual of sorts, for anyone reading your drawings. Another form of information gathering tool on drawings is the schedule. A schedule displays quantities, sometimes combined with a graphical representation. It serves to itemize all instances of a certain product, and sometimes groups them by type. For example, a window schedule would identify all window types in a project, along with their size, material, operation and number of instances of each type. Other items, normally found on the first few pages of a set of architectural drawings are location plans. These serve to show the location of the property, as well as technical data related to its location. These may include the following. A satellite image, to show its location in relation to the neighborhood. A zoning map view, to show the zoning of the property. A weather data map, to show rainfall intensity, snow loading, or seismic activity zones. A street map view, to show location of property. Most of the above can usually be obtained online via municipal mapping or even Google Earth. A site plan or a plot plan is a type of drawing used by architects, landscape architects, urban planners, and engineers, which shows existing and proposed conditions for a given area, typically a parcel of land which is to be modified. Site plans typically show buildings, roads, sidewalks and paths slash trails, parking, drainage facilities, sanitary sewer lines, water lines, lighting and landscaping and garden elements. Location and sizes of municipal services can usually be obtained from the municipality where the project is being constructed. Site plans may also contain topographical information, such as existing and proposed elevations, not to be confused with building elevations and contour lines. This information is normally provided by a land surveyor. A floor plan is a technical drawing to scale, showing a view from above, at a specific cut line above the floor level of that particular floor. It serves to illustrate the relationships between rooms, spaces, traffic patterns, and other physical features at one level of a structure. Dimensions are usually drawn between the walls to specify room sizes and wall lengths. Floor plans may also include details of fixtures like sinks, water heaters, furnaces, etc. Floor plans may include notes for construction to specify finishes, construction methods, or symbols for electrical items. They may also include tagged elements, to identify various assemblies or items, which are cross-referenced to legends. Architecture drawings, especially floor plans, can sometimes be difficult to read to the untrained eye. They will become easier to read, as you gain more experience, and an understanding of the various components they contain. This short video gives a 3D graphical representation of what a floor plan seeks to illustrate.
This video takes a fully completed floor plan, and hides all of the descriptive annotations, until all that is left is the main components of the building, such as walls, doors, windows etc. A properly executed set of architectural drawings, should have various line weights, to give it some depth. This will help the reader differentiate the various components. With BIM you can also add color to further differentiate components, as apparent on this floor plan. The various types of plans found in a typical set of residential architectural drawings include Foundation plan A plan view of all below grade floors or components Floor plan An individual plan view of each above grade floor, such as first floor plan, second floor plan etc. Floor framing plan a plan view of each floor detailing the structural components of the floor, such as floor joists, beams and columns. Roof plan. A plan view from above the building not cutting through any floors. Typically, what you would see, flying at a very low altitude in a plane above the building. Floor finish plan. A plan view of each story showing the various floor finishes proposed, such as carpet, ceramic tile, wood flooring etc. Electrical. Mechanical and plumbing plans also form part of a typical drawing set. These are discussed further in this lecture. Elevations are a specific type of drawing used to illustrate the exterior or interior of a building, or portion thereof. An elevation is drawn from a vertical plane, looking straight onto a building facade or interior surface like standing in front of a building and looking straight at it. However, elevation drawings are orthographic projections. This means they are not drawn in perspective and there is no foreshortening. In a drawing set, they are usually placed after plan views. There are different types of elevation drawings. Exterior elevation. Interior elevation. Elevation callout. Elevation detail. Like elevations, sections are drawn from a vertical plane. However, they differ from elevations, in that the placement of the vertical plane, is at a location that slices the building. This is as if you cut through a building or space vertically, and stand directly in front looking straight at it. Section drawings are also orthographic projections, with the exception of section perspectives. This means they are not drawn in perspective and there is no foreshortening. They are normally placed after elevations in a drawing set. There are different types of section drawings. Section Section callout or blow-up section Section details The following video gives you a 3D graphical representation of how a section is created. Architectural details are portions of the building drawn at a larger scale than the plans and exterior elevations. This is done to accurately show the various methods of construction and to illustrate in greater detail the size and relationship of various materials and assemblies. The scale of details varies according to the size of the item being drawn. In Imperial the most common scales are half an inch equals one foot and three quarters of an inch equals one foot. In metric they are, 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. They are used to convey accuracy and provide more elaborate information. The various types of details, commonly found on a typical set of residential architectural drawings, would be Sectional details A section detail, just like a section, is a cut through a component of a building. They are usually referenced from the sections. That is to say, that they are a blow up of a certain area of the main section. They are also drawn from a vertical plane. Plan details. Plan details are just like section details but are from the horizontal plane, meaning they are a blow up of a certain area of a plan view, such as a floor plan or foundation plan. Elevation details. 
Elevation details are details that do not cut through the component that is being illustrated and are drawn from the vertical plane. They are most commonly used to illustrate millwork components. A house electrical plan, also called the house wiring diagram, is the visual representation of the entire electrical wiring system or circuitry of a house. The purpose is to illustrate the proposed energy distribution in the building that will be used to power the various equipment and appliances around the house through proper installation and operation of the different elements. This includes the location of things such as electrical outlets, meter base, switches, breakers, and more. The electrical plan or electrical drawing has symbols, lines, dimensions, and notations. These things are like a guide for the electricians who deploy electrical systems in the building. Electrical plans are drawn on a bare copy of the floor plan that is to scale. However, the electrical symbols themselves are not to scale. A mechanical plan, also called an HVAC plan, is the visual representation of the heating, ventilating and air conditioning components of a house. This includes the location and size of things such as heating ducts, exhaust fans, and HRVs. They can also include hydronic components, such as piping or radiators, if water heating is proposed. They serve as a guide for the heating contractor to fabricate the ductwork and position things like supply and air diffusers, as well as specifications of the heating, cooling and ventilation equipment proposed. HVAC plans are drawn on a bare copy of the floor plan that is to scale. However, the mechanical components are not always drawn to scale. A plumbing plan serves to illustrate the plumbing system and pipework of a house. This includes the location and size of things like the waste pipes and venting pipes, potable water system and hot water heating system. It can also specify the type and make of all plumbing fixtures and plumbing equipment. Plumbing plans are drawn on a bare copy of the floor plan that is to scale. However, the pipes, although to scale, are normally drawn as a single line. Architectural symbols are graphical representations of different components and features of a house, such as doors, windows, stairs and appliances, that appear on drawings. The architectural drafting symbols can vary in appearance from one plan to another, but can usually be distinguished fairly easily, once you have a basic understanding of their meanings. In manual drafting, a lot of symbols can be drawn using a tracing template, such as the one shown. In BIM however, because most components are three-dimensional, symbols are automatically created when the component is inserted in the model. Nonetheless, you still need to familiarize yourself with what each symbol represents, as some components may have multiple ways of being illustrated, depending on what is being specified. A perfect example of this are windows. They may be represented differently based on their operation. Annotation symbols are the navigation tools of an architectural drawing. They provide a roadmap to help the reader navigate the drawings, by cross-referencing and numbering the various plans, elevations, sections, details and sheet numbers of a drawing set. Whether the symbol is for a cross-section or a detail callout, it identifies the name, number, sheet location, or scale of the item. Other symbols denote things like levels or grid lines, as well as slope or direction. This picture, shows the door types commonly found in residential construction, and their corresponding graphic representation in plan view. Here we have the same but for windows. Hatch patterns are an industry standard, used to classify and display various materials within your project. This screen shows some of the various patterns available in Revit. 
Some are named by the corresponding material, such as brick or wood. Others are numbered, based on an industry standard numbering system. These symbols represent stairs. Various configurations are shown. In BIM, you can annotate various elements and properties of stairs, with just a few clicks of the mouse. These include treads, risers, slope, up and down direction. Kitchen appliance symbols and some plumbing symbols are represented here. Let's eat! Would you please shut up? <laughs>